Top nine tips you must know into 2023 to make your move to Nashville as seamless as possible. And if you heard my video from two years ago when we were in the middle of COVID, this is all different. You don't need to pay attention to that one anymore. You do need to pay attention to this one though, because it's for real. The times have changed and you gotta know these tips. See you on the other side. So many people are thinking of moving to Nashville. We still have about 80 to 90 people a day moving to the Middle Tennessee area. Now, if you know me, you know that I've been saying all along, Nashville does it just include the little, the city of Nashville, which is approximately 900,000 people. Nashville, where I'm talking about it, is really inclusive of the entire Middle Tennessee area, the 13 counties that do make up what you might consider Nashville. So that's going to be Franklin, William, which is in Williamson County, Franklin, Brentwood, some of the areas you might have heard of, or over into Mount Juliet in Wilson County, Hendersonville over in Sumner County. So when I'm talking about this entire SMSA, these tips are very important to you because it is still talking about what's the real city on what's going on here in the Middle Tennessee area in 2023. As I said, if you started watching me maybe back even two years ago, because people do the research, if you started watching then, we were in the middle, if you'll go back on that way back machine, and remember we were kind of at the beginnings, middle, and all the way running through the times of COVID. That has been the weirdest real estate market I have ever, ever been through, and I've been in real estate since 1984. But that was the strangest time ever. I mean, prices went increasingly high. Sellers were not having to make any kind of concessions to buyers. Buyers had to be there within hours of seeing a house or make purchases or offers sight unseen with no inspections, with absolutely no contingencies. It was crazy, wild, wild west. Except for over here in the east. The market has changed. But there are still very many tips that I can give you that are very reasonable to consider if you're considering moving to Nashville from anywhere outside of this area. These tips will help you make your move as seamless as possible. I'm Susan Zetford, the realtor here in Nashville, native Nashvillian, one of the few that remain. And what I like to try to do on this show weekly is to share with people all I know about Nashville, the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, the places to live, the best neighborhoods, the best suburbs, all the things that you might need to know as considering a move to Nashville. Now, I've never moved anywhere else, so your questions are really what drives this show. If you've got a question, please feel free to put it in the comments or you've got my number. Call me, text, email, let me know what questions you would like me to answer for you. And I'm sure other people have that same question. I'll be sure to answer it here on this show. Let's get going on my number one tip. So number one, first tip's gonna sound a little crazy. Stay in your home after you've closed. Let's talk about it. During COVID periods, absolutely no one was taking an offer on the purchase of a home subject to the sale and or closing of their home in another city. So many, many times people had to have their home sold uh, to be able to come here and buy with cash or possibly a loan. That still is not the case here, however, it's very rare for someone to get the best price possible to negotiate the best terms possible and still have the subject to the sale or subject to the closing of their home in another city contingency. So here's what's still going to give you the best possible price, the best possible terms on your new home that we're gonna to work together to buy here. The best way for you to do that is to have your home sold in your hometown. Have it closed in your hometown and negotiate in your contract for sale that you're selling. Negotiate in that possibly you staying an extra 30 days after closing. That allows you to pack up all your belongings and also allows you to then come here and buy a home that is clear of all of those contingencies. And that's going to still give you the best possible terms on your purchase that you might not otherwise have. So, although it sounds strange to say, stay in your home as long as possible, even if you have to rent back for 30, 45 days there, 
that truly is going to give you the best possible purchasing power when you come here to Nashville. Now, what are we going to do? You've sold your home there. During that period, we've been studying this market. You know the ins and outs of what, where you want to be. We've already determined all that. I can FaceTime show you homes or your real estate so that you really have a strong understanding of pricing and you understand our market. Your home is ready to be closed. Then we can go in and make strong offers and whether you can negotiate getting immediate move in here or not, I've got a plan for you. If you have to give the seller still another 30, 45 days here, don't worry, I got you covered. I got you. That'll be a little further along the line. Our goal here is for you not to have to make two moves. Hopefully you can sell your home, stay in your home 30, 45 days, 60 days there purchase a home here if we have to get a mortgage that's going to take 30 days to close it hopefully we can have that moving van move you directly here into your new home number two moving to nashville you've got to have a local lender there's no two hoops about it having your lender in your city doesn't give any realtor here confidence of knowing that person they've never worked with that person before they've never known how good or maybe not good of a realtor they are i don't trust a single one of them now do not get an e-lender where there's not a human being to pick up the phone and talk to who follows that file all the way through. If you live in California, what we're going to do is get, help you uh, get a lender that you appreciate, that you understand, that you trust. We'll give you lots of names. We're going to go ahead and work on getting your pre-approval based on what your income is going to be, based on your salary, based on your employment, based on what your home is sold, what you're going to net from that. We're going to go ahead and have a pre-approval ready for you here in Nashville in the area you're going to purchase with a local lender. Again, it's back to doing everything we can possibly do to be able to have you be in the position to buy the new home with the most amount of concessions from the seller. If I'm representing you, it's the buyer. The most amount of concessions, the least amount of friction that we can offer a seller to get you the best price possible. Included in that is having a pre-approved letter from a lender that people locally know and trust and uh, your offer is in all probability going to be accepted. You've got to get that local pre-approval. It's simple. Email, conversation, reach out to them, notify your credit agencies that you are going to be looking at purchasing a home and that will help stop dinging on the credit that a lot of people are concerned about. But that pre-approval is super important and that needs to happen way before you even decide, yes, I'm selling my house and moving here. It's part of our pre-workout plan. Remember during COVID when I might have mentioned, don't bring anything that you don't want here. That still qualifies. Say you're in Chicago and you got a house full of furniture. You found a home here that you want to purchase. You're packing up and moving. If you don't love that furniture, if you don't love everything about it, if you don't see a place to be able to use it in your new home, then leave it there. Sell it, put it on the marketplace there. Try to consign it. Now, how am I going to help you with that? We found a house. I can get some measurements. We can see exactly where the windows are to so see if your sofa might fit in the middle of it. Once we've purchased that home, you've got the dimensions of the, of the furniture that you love. You know exactly what you're going to bring. You, that dining room table may end up being something that you take the leaves out and you use in a smaller situation in the breakfast room or so many different ways of using furniture in different rooms depending on what that new home is going to be like. Taking measurements of everything you have that you love and taking pictures of it, maybe where you have it now and being open to moving it into different rooms for different uses. The table behind me was my grandmother's desk. Different uses of the things that you love, we'll find a place for it, bring it, have those measurements, have those pictures. But if you don't love it, you don't want it, do not bring it. Don't spend thousands of dollars with those movers because the moving companies are expensive. Hey there, need a snack. What are you doing in here? The next is bring it with you. Most homes in the Nashville area, the home sellers take their refrigerator with them. They also take their washer and dryer. Now, of course it can be a negotiable item, but it's typical here in the Nashville area for the homeowner to take their refrigerator with them take their washer and dryer. If you don't want it, that's fine. It may be part of something that you've got. You put your other refrigerator in the uh, in the garage. Put in another uh, plug in that garage and you have two fridges. But you gotta know, uh, if in your area, typically the washer and dryer and the refrigerator remain, 
You gotta know you're probably coming to an empty house here. So some things you need to pitch and leave where you came from. Some things you need to bring here. Have you got children? Or maybe bringing mom and dad with you. Maybe someone who needs some adult care needs. It is never too early to start doing that research for those um, things that you might need and going ahead and getting on waiting lists. If you want to get your children in some of the private schools that are around, that's something we need to have talked about so I can help you find a location close to it within your budget and proximity. But the other part of that is you've got to, in many of these schools, get your kids on a waiting list uh, a year in advance. That's too long. So many of them are very full. I can't tell you which one right now because it's going to be different all the time. Same with senior care. You know, we've got, uh, it, depending on the needs, there may be a waiting list for those things. It may well cost you $100, $200 to put some on the waiting list. But the last thing in the world you need to do is get here, plan on having your kids in a certain school, plan on having mom in a certain nursing care center or adult memory care or something like that. Getting here and thinking you can walk right in and that not happen. So those are super important. I can help guide you in the right direction of where to look for finding these specific needs, which is where that phone call comes in so important. But it is never too early to go ahead and start doing that research and um, getting on those waiting lists. Same goes with uh, summer camps. Maybe once you've decided, yes, I'm coming here, I have the address, it's February, and um, you want your children to be in summer camps, February, actually, it's going to be late. Many of them are well be already filled up. While I'm talking about children, which makes me think of shots and immunization schedule, be sure to go ahead and have those already with you. Bring them at a place where you can have them at hand because you're going to have to prove to get them into school. You're going to have to prove the immunization shots that your kids have had um, to take your dog to dog daycare or any of the things. You're going to have to have those shots. The dogs have to wear rabies hats at all times on their collars. Be sure to keep those papers in the place that you can put your hands on them because you're going to need them. Also, talking about pets, dogs, cats. I found that in many places, people are not used to their dogs needing heartworm in flea medications or flea treatments. That is something that you're going to need to have here in Tennessee. Now, if you're coming from a really dry area that may not have some of those needs, it's something that's new I've found a lot of people have never heard of before. We keep our dogs on in a monthly heartworm medication. Most people do. The vet will recommend. We do have leash laws here, and uh, we do have lots of dog parks. But one of the things you definitely want to have is that heartworm in flea treatments on a regular basis. Oh, and that reminds me, I have been, um, I have been corrected so many times, and it's okay, on how to pronounce Nashville. Now, I know I sound kind of Southern and I say Nashville. It, saying Nashville is going to immediately mark you as somebody who's not going from here for long. Nashville is correct way to say it. Now, there's a lot of places that we don't say, like Lafayette. Lafayette. We have a street called Lafayette and everybody from different areas of the country, especially down in Louisiana, they call it Lafayette or anyway, it's Lafayette. Google calls Demon Brand. I keep forgetting about that. It makes me laugh every time. There's a main street down by um, the riverfront called Demon Brand. That's what you call it, Demon Brand. Now, your GPS is going to call it Demon Brand. Demon Brand which is hysterical. So the mispronunciations are there. Nashville, Nashville, whatever you want to call us, Music City, it's okay. But when I say Nashville, I know that makes people cringe. Sorry about that. One of the many things that people love about Tennessee, and I hope you take advantage of it, is our hunting and fishing. Uh, we have s several lakes. You may know about Percy Priest and Old Hickory Lake. There's also Tim's Ford Lake. There's also so many uh, river fronts for great fishing. Lots of things and outdoor activity to do that involve the hunting and fishing. Deer hunting is a huge situation here. We actually can now hunt on Sundays. That's a new law of, I don't know, just a couple years ago. But um, you do have to have a license to do any kind of fishing or hunting here, unless it's on your own property and then you can do what you want. But you also have to have a social security number to get that license. You also have to have been a state resident for a year 
13 to 15 year old children can have a junior hunting license. Uh, 13 and under has no need for a license to fish. Then what you can do is you can buy a license for a lifetime. There's a certain price for that. And the other thing is our licenses last for a year through the month of, I'm having to look here, the year ends February 18th and it lasts from the date you purchased it to February 18th. So if you get here on February 1st and you buy a license, don't no, wait till the 19th and buy it. And it lasts for a good year. Best deal by far is to go ahead and buy a lifetime license. I'll put that information in the in the notes below for you to check it all out at the uh, Wildlife Commission. Number nine, are you aware of some of the academic um, perks that come to high school kids who graduate from a Tennessee high school? That may have you, many people are thinking about once my kids have graduated high school or my son has graduated high school, then we're going to come and he's going to be off to college. Well, that may be the perfect fit so he can graduate from his high school in your old hometown. But you might want to consider this. We have a scholarship system whereby kids who have uh, graduated from a Tennessee high school will get a technical college or community college free. 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 Free ride with they have to have certain grades and certain parameters but that's a huge savings for so many and then maybe if they want to go on to a four-year college they've gotten two years free uh, because they graduated from the high school that is a Tennessee high school so check into that it might save you a lot a lot of money all right this last year has changed by six months really of 2022 to now this is January I don't know the 10th ish has really softened in our real estate market. Now we have not decreased in pricing in the close end of town. Within 30, 30 minutes of downtown Nashville, 30, maybe 40 minutes, we have not decreased in price. Uh, but what we are seeing is a deceleration of price. It's a little like um, we, were, we, were, we were on the interstate, flying through the interstate, and the prices of homes were appreciating like crazy in 21 and 22. We are now on the just cruising. We're pretty much staying even with our prices We're increasing. They expect about a 4% appreciation, four to six. Again, depending on the rarity of the home you want and the location, but we're not expecting the 22 to 25, 30% appreciation that we had experienced over the last two years. That doesn't mean you don't need to be here ready and able to purchase. And the best way to do that is to, as I say, negotiate that contract such that you are pre-approved, such that um, you have some flexibility on the possession date that you need to get from your uh, seller. We can probably negotiate now getting your title paid for by the seller. That was not the case a couple years ago. So you're in a better position for being able to negotiate with your seller. But be here ready to get the best deal possible. That may mean that you can't move directly from your home in um, Chicago, or California, or, or New Jersey. You can't move directly from there straight into this home. You may need to have a good um, 15, 20, 30 days that you give the seller so that you get $10,000, $15,000 off of the purchase price. So what you need to do is be know exactly what your next step is going to be. Help you with that. Months and months and months ago, we could go into an Airbnb and negotiate a better price because tourism was down. Tourism down, Airbnb, Airbnbs were having lesser daily prices and some were doing us weekly and monthly prices that were more affordable. Now our tourism is right back up to where it was. That's not gonna be the best uh, deal for you. But I can help you find maybe a, a long-term stay hotel for say 30 days. You bring your furniture, you bring all your things here, you put it into a short-term storage, you move into a long-term stay hotel um, for 30-ish days. If you stay for 31 days, you actually don't even have to pay the hotel motel tax. And if you're able to get twenty, thirty thousand dollars off the purchase price because you let the seller have what he needed time frame for possession, then you are ready and able to purchase and get the best deal possible for your long-term um, for your long-term benefit. I can help you find a place, a long-term stay hotel, or we have the connections to be able to help you find maybe a three-month 
rental in um, one of the apartments. So rather than year-long leases, we're able to find a short-term lease. Maybe you haven't found the house that you want. I can get you into a three-month lease or so into an apartment in the area that you think you want to live in, and we can find your home and be ready to move smooth sailing into there. You need to reach out to me. You need to reach out to us so we can help you map out your game plan. And these are overview. We will review everything and far more based on your specific needs. So the last step is reach out to me. Call me. Let's get you moving uh, to truly, I think, the best city in the country right here in Middle Tennessee. Looking forward to talking.